We all want to be better, stronger, smarter, healthier, but for some reason, we never seem to stick with it. In this video, I'll teach you a simple step-by-step -step practical framework that solves that problem, allowing you to blow past your goals effortlessly. This system is literally what I use to train myself to not only be able to hold a 15 minute plank literally every single day, but to actually crave it. If you want that kind of raw power to imbue everything you do, stick with me and let's get it. Step one, don't set goals, set actions. Typical goals are vague and impractical. Telling yourself you want to lose 20 pounds is meaningless. One, it doesn't tell you how you're going to get there. And two, is an outcome you cannot directly control. Instead, make it as specific as possible, both in action and in time frame. A goal shouldn't be to lose 20 pounds, it should be to do 10,000 push-ups. Even better is to say you'll do all 10,000 by the end of the year. Now you can immediately visualize all the steps needed to accomplish this goal, literally from step one all the way to step 10,000. Then set a non-negotiable daily push-up minimum and bam, you're in business. Simple, actionable, and repeatable. Don't expend any further thought on the matter. Hit the goal and start another. Here's some other examples. Goal isn't to learn computer programming. Goal is to code 25 functional programs. Goal isn't to get into a relationship. Goal is to have 100 interesting conversations with strangers. Goal isn't to become a famous YouTuber. Goal is to make 100 videos stuffed with as much value as possible. See the difference? Don't be outcome oriented, be action oriented. Focus on processes you can control. Even better if these actions can be broken down into five minute bite sized chunks you can literally do right now. This is the crux of step two, the smallest and easiest unit possible. What can you do in the next five minutes that would get you closer to where you want to be? Step two is all about minimizing friction, both real and imagined. Gym too far away? Get rid of it. That's friction. The ground you're standing on is the gym. You're already there. And it's free. Don't have a personal trainer? You don't need it. That's friction. Don't pay someone to tell you to do 10 burpees. Just do 10 burpees. Want to learn Spanish, but you're intimidated by how much you need to learn? That's mental friction. Stop scaring yourself. You don't need all 93,000 words of the Spanish language, just 30,000 for native level fluency and 3,000 for a basic conversation. Heck, you don't even need all 3,000. Today, all you need is one. That's your Lego brick, as small and simple as possible. My word today is pollo. Oh, I even have my word for tomorrow too, hermanos. That's 2,998 to go and I barely even broke a sweat progress. My plank journey started with 20 seconds. That was my Lego brick. It was all I could do, and so that was all I needed to do. 20 seconds is not a lot, but this wasn't just a one-off thing. This was a commitment to plank 20 seconds a day, every single day, for the rest of my life. A Lego brick is thus a life contract, a life commitment. Understand the significance of what you're about to embark on. Sounds pretty daunting, but it's actually not. Your life is already filled with unconscious life commitments like brushing your teeth, eating food, going to work. Only difference is that these are pretty much standard. Every average Joe brushes their teeth and wipes their ass. If you don't want to be average, then do things the average person does not do. What kind of Lego bricks do your role models do daily? If you aren't doing them too, why do you deserve the life rewards they enjoy? Point is, transforming your life doesn't materialize in some distant future when you figured it all out. Transforming your life starts today. It starts now, and literally should only take five minutes. When becoming a better you is so simple, there's no excuse to not do it. In fact, that's the entire idea behind the Lego brick. It should be so easy and frictionless that even a baby could do it. And if at this point you still aren't doing it, well, that tells you something, right? Looks like this thing wasn't that important to you. You don't want it enough. So stop lying to yourself and go pick something you actually do want. And when you figure it out, come back for step three, the anchor and the toll. The anchor is something you already do in your everyday life that you then tack this Lego brick to. This is how you carve out a safe haven to ensure this task becomes a clear part of your daily life. James Clear calls this a cue or a trigger in his book Atomic Habits. For example, to read more, I've anchored audiobooks to several key parts of my day. Instead of scrolling social media while taking dumps, I now listen to the next chapter of a great book. To meditate more, I've anchored meditation to all my meals. Instead of going onto my phone or mindlessly worrying about stupid things while I chew, 
I meditate instead. Eating food is now keenly associated with calmly being present with that food. And guess what? Food is 10 times more flavorful and interesting too. Point is, I'm never going to forget to eat right. Now I'm never going to forget to meditate too. Simple and elegant. The toll is just as simple too. Imagine your day safeguarded by several tolls. Let's say you want to learn to play the guitar, but you haven't touched it in ages. First thing you do when you wake up is strap that baby onto your back. You can't take it off until you've practiced for at least five minutes. That's the price of the morning guitar toll. Here's some other examples. It costs 10 push-ups to play video games, 10 pages of a book to eat that piece of candy, 20 burpees to order pizza tonight, put tolls even on mundane things. Before you can access the shower, you have to learn one Spanish word and practice its pronunciation the entire time. Get as creative as you want. I know what you're thinking. Putting intentional roadblocks into the day doesn't seem practical. However, if you really think about it, your life is already filled with tolls too. What happens after you finish taking a dump? Unless you like to live dangerously, you wipe your ass. That's the toll you pay to get to leave the toilet, right? What's the toll to get out of bed in the morning? Five snoozes, 10 minutes of existential fear, 30 minutes of phone scrolling, and five minutes of self-pity? How about you get rid of tolls that hold you back and conscientiously put into place ones that actually make your life better? The less of something you want, like wasting your time on your phone, the more expensive you make the toll. The more you want to do something, like push-ups, the more you tie it to something you cannot avoid, like the shower. Just pretend you're at the arcade or the carnival. You want that fluffy unicorn? 25 raffle tickets, my friend. Done right, the whole system should actually be kind of fun. Once that's set, next up is step number four, becoming Pavlov's dog. You know the story where a scientist rings a bell before serving a dog food and repeats this until the ringing bell alone causes salivation? This is called classical conditioning. And guess what? You need to become the dog. This is how I've hacked my brain to crave 15 minute planks. In fact, my brain no longer considers it to be a chore. This was no accident. I intentionally built this association to ensure I never stop planking. To do this, pair your Lego brick with something incredibly enjoyable. The more insanely enjoyable it is, the better. Only catch is you can never do it again except when you're doing the Lego brick. This is called the sacred rule. For me, that insanely enjoyable thing was a silly phone game called Clash Royale. And thus, my sacred rule was this. I can only play this silly phone game when I'm holding a plank. No exceptions. And so, I immediately experienced two benefits. One, I stopped wasting hours of my day playing the game because I could only do it while planking. And two, planking suddenly became much more interesting. In fact, I was so addicted to the game that I started planking randomly throughout the day just to get a chance to play. Needless to say, I quickly ratcheted up my plank times as a result. Of course, this trick only works when you never break the sacred rule. Once you break it, the Pavlovian association dies. But if you don't, something interesting will start to happen. Just like Pavlov's dog, you'll start to salivate at the thought of the Lego brick itself. The longer you adhere to the sacred rule, the more tightly interconnected to the reward centers of your brain the Lego brick becomes. This is how you hack your brain to enjoy difficult tasks. Think about the significance of this. While others whine and moan, forced to use discipline each time they want to get shit done, you just get it done, basically effortlessly. Not only have you incorporated it into your daily routine, you actually enjoy it. That's a huge unfair advantage. Who's going to become a better piano player in the end? Some dude that begrudgingly forces himself to practice a few times a week at most? Or you, someone who happily practices every single day without fail because of the huge self-engineered triggered dopamine rush that floods your skull when you practice? Answer's pretty clear, right? Only upfront investment you need to do is sacrifice one of your addictions to the sacred rule. Unless you live with Jesus in a convent of nuns watching your every move, I'm sure you have a few vices to spare. Let's be real here. But hurry up, because we're about to move on to step five, the feather. You started with the Lego brick, the smallest and easiest unit you could have possibly broken your goal into. You've integrated this Lego brick fully into your life. It's anchored down as securely and as easily as it is for you to wipe your own ass. If you were really clever, you've conditioned your brain to crave it. Congrats, you are now ready for a little bit more but don't overdo it. You've worked so hard to build this routine. Don't burn yourself out now. Remember, you're doing this for the rest of your life, and thus, the next incremental step up should almost feel like nothing, almost as if it was just 
a feather. If I was holding a 20 second plank before, this is when I would start holding a 25 second plank. What's five extra seconds but rounding error? That is the power of the feather. Imperceptible alone, but when combined and repeated a thousand times, it becomes unstoppable. Key is to take your time and let yourself get used to this feather. I don't care if it takes you one day or one month, hold this feather along with the original Lego brick until the combined weight becomes as easy as wiping your ass once again. And when that happens, guess what? You're ready for another feather. Rinse and repeat. This is the exact way I increase my plank time to an all time high of 30 minutes a day every day. The only reason why I do 15 minutes now is because dedicating 30 minutes to just one exercise was pretty inefficient. There were other muscles I wanted to work out and other things I wanted to do, like save abandoned puppies and stuff. Thus, a daily 15 minute plank was the compromise. And now, because it's a solid part of my daily routine requiring minimal upkeep, I'm free to tackle the next big thing. This is the crux of step six, building the skyscraper. This is the part where you simply don't stop, ever. Always add Lego bricks and feathers to your arsenal in a continuing train of accumulating positive habits. With a good anchor or toll, these Lego pieces should naturally click into your day with minimal effort or thought. The idea is that once they are subconscious, your conscious mind is then free to tackle even bigger projects with even larger ramifications. This is where the power of compounding habits really starts to take off. You won't feel it at first, but if you keep at it, the growth will soon become exponential. Just like compounding interest makes you wealthy over time, compounding habits makes you unstoppable over time. Forget just planking or learning the guitar for a moment. Dream even bigger. Think about what you would look like in 10 years after sticking to a regimen like this. Imagine investing in Lego blocks for literally every skill tree or project you ever wanted. Charisma, knowledge, emotional intelligence, resilience, discipline, creativity, initiative, compassion. Stack all these little blocks on top of each other what do you get? An endless skyscraper towering into the sky others can only dream of. This is how you become limitless. Build your skyscraper and elevate yourself literally into another plane of existence. As long as you don't stop building, you become by definition unstoppable. And that's it my friends. I hope today's video gave you some actionable steps you can take to get to where you want to be. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, subscribe, and then go tell your friends, your grandma, and your pet hamster. Let me know what you want to accomplish this year. And if you haven't joined my Substack already for early access to more ideas just like this one, then please consider becoming a paid member there. All right, smell you later. And once again, want to give a quick shout out to a few fine folks. We got Natal Neptalia Gabolahan 2568, QNTMC4631, Katie Mac NC 971. You guys are awesome. I'm super appreciative of all your support, and this is why I do this. So thank you so much once again.